Hello and welcome to Emerald's Table. Southern food is absolutely fantastic. It's rich, it's fried, it's barbecued. And while the calories are definitely worth it, today we decided to lighten up some of our southern favorites. You're going to absolutely love my crispy oven fried catfish served with a sweet and savory succotash and my classic kicked up collard greens. And then I'll serve it with my southern tradition, rich, garlicky cornbread. Come on, y'all, join me at my table. Well, it doesn't matter where you're from, Southern food is a favorite of many, including me. Joining me at my table are some of the most fit men and women in the country. They're members of the United States military. So representing the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard, I can't tell you how thrilled I am. Welcome TJ, Amber, Charles, Jen. But what is it really pronounced? Genevieve, Chef. Genevieve. <laughs> yes. Genevieve and Matt. Welcome, yes, guys. Good to have you. And on behalf of certainly everybody here at Emerald's Table, and I know I'm speaking for all Americans, thank you for what you do and what you're doing for our country. Thank you so much. I hope you're hungry. <laughs> I <laughs> hope you're hungry, guys. I'll tell you what. I know you guys travel all over the world, but, you know, let me tell you, tasting many culinary gems, I hope that you're doing that, at least having a little bit of that fun. But southern food is just amazing. And like you guys in traveling and spending time in the South, there's just something about the love, the food of love there. You know, whether it's the fried chicken or the collard greens or the spoon bread, it's just, it just I could keep going on and on. Gumbo. So today I'm gonna give you a little taste of that. We're gonna begin with a crispy catfish dish. We're not gonna traditionally fry it like fried catfish like every Fridays. We're gonna, uh, we're basically gonna oven, oven do this. Oven bake it where it's gonna be crispy. I'm going to show you a little technique. I know you all kind of dabble in, in culinary uh, in, in the service, so uh, you understand that. I don't know if I'd be doing this for 1,400 people, <laughs> but we'll give it a shot. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, folks, is we're going to take some panko breadcrumbs. Now, these are a Japanese-style breadcrumb that are much coarser than traditional American breadcrumbs, and I'll give you a look at that real quick just in my hand. You see how how coarse that is? Panko. So they're used in a lot of tempuras, and I've been using uh, panko for a long time. Put them on a sheet pan, all two boxes, about enough for a half sheet pan. Bake them in the oven 350 degrees for 10 minutes. They get golden brown. So while they're cooling down just a little bit, as I just pulled those out of the oven, what we're going to do is we're going to start our succotash. So we're going to take a little bit of butter, and also, to that, what we're going to do is cut it with a little bit of oil. Because as you guys know, uh, adding a little bit of oil to butter is going to increase the smoking point. So we'll be able to really just cook this at a little higher temperature. Because now I'm going to turn the temperature on to like medium to start with. Very simply, I have a little diced onion, a little sweet bell pepper, and some garlic. And then basically, as that's melted, what we're going to do is begin to add that to our pan, which is really going to be the foundation of our succotash. Now, while that's going on, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of the beginning of the foundation of this. I'm going to add a little salt and a little fresh ground pepper. Now, I know you guys probably, whether it's the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guards, you're not cracking fresh ground pepper. It's probably like in that size right there or, or, or much larger. So just bear with me. Give me your thoughts, okay? Just pretend for a minute, guys. Come on. All right, so now what we're going to do is, as the breadcrumbs are cooled, now what we're going to do is another component, and that is we're going to take about four egg whites and we're going to whisk it. Obviously, if we were doing this in much larger quantities, We'd probably do this on a, on a, on a machine, on a, on a mixer. And we're not looking for too much peaks. We're looking for really soft peaks, which is just about there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that sort of meringue 
and add it in our baking dish. Now, I went to the fishmonger this morning and found a beautiful catfish. And I think a lot of people really are confused about catfish. It's got a bad name. It's kind of like the lemon, right? It's got a bad name. Like, you know, you wake up and you go, oh, I got a lemon. You know, what does that mean? You know, well, it's like the catfish. Oh, I got a catfish. Ah, oh, throw it back in. Really, it's, it's a delicious, delicious fish. Sweet, and of course, there's many different types of catfish. When I went to the fishmonger this morning, bought some beautiful fillets. And you know, it's, it's amazing. It's kind of like tilapia, sort of how accessible right now that catfish really is. I mean, look at that. Very, very white, very lean, no smell, and it does not smell like bayou catfish. You know, bayou catfish or what's called sea trout has a little distinct, strong flavor to it. This here, especially the farm raised from Mississippi, really, really accessible. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a piece and we're gonna just put a little of my essence on there, a little spice. We're gonna just sort of dredge it, but before we do that, those poor little breadcrumbs, they don't taste like anything. So that's where we come in. We're gonna take some lemon zest that we took off of the lemon, just grated. Now we'll mix that in. We're gonna take some lemon juice and add it to the meringue so it has a little lemon flavor to it. Now we're ready to begin. If we wanna make it a little spicier, okay? Not playing any games on the ship, <laughs> but we wanna make it a little spicier, we could just add a little bit of crushed pepper. Now, here's what we do. Goes dredged in there, then it gets dredged inside of our egg white and then right back into the crumbs. Look at that. And so now what we've done, we'll shake off the excess. Look at that. We're gonna repeat the process again, those of you in slow motion. We're gonna take a little bit of the essence. We're gonna just dredge it in those lemon crumbs. Meanwhile, we're heating our oven at 425 degrees because this is really gonna cook in about 15 minutes. Dredged in the panko, shaken off. Into the egg whites it goes, back in the panko. Now I'm gonna repeat the process so that we all get a piece of catfish. Dred shake it off, right on our rack it goes. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some lima beans, better known as a butter bean. I'm gonna add that to the pot of our onions and sweet bell pepper. When we come back, the catfish is gonna go in the oven and we're gonna start some incredible light collard greens. Stay with us, we'll be right back for some more Southern hospitality with our great servicemen and women. Thank you, we'll be right back. See, easy, right guys? I mean, really simple. Okay, so welcome back, folks, at Emerald's Table. I'm sharing some lightened Southern favorites. Now our catfish is going in the oven, guys. About 15 minutes, like I said. Meanwhile, our succotash almost caramelized the peppers and onions. Now we're gonna add some lima beans. You guys work with a lot of lima beans? Not really. Not, Not really? really? So lima beans are pale green, they're plump. They have a sort of a kidney-shaped curve to them. And they're usually available in the south, like early summer, like June to September. Uh, you can also buy them frozen. They're also called butter beans is another name for them. Now, let's talk about another southern favorite. And that would be collard greens. You guys work with collard greens? Yes, yes. sir. You do? Yes, sir. So, for that many people, you, you're cooking for what, 3,000 people? 3,000, chef, yeah. 3,000 on a ship, and you're cooking collard greens. What are you doing, <laughs> in a, like in a kettle? It's, yeah, so we have uh, coppers. We have uh, three different sizes. There's like a 50-gallon copper, 80-gallon copper, and then a little smaller one. I believe it's like 20-something gallons. Yeah. Yes, chef. So the greens, do they come clean to you? Uh, you... They, they're actually frozen, pre-cut, uh, ready to go. All you got to do is open up a package. And throw, then ready throw to right cook them. <laughs> Unlike this, you know, in New Orleans, during the season, when, when collard greens, mustard greens, all those greens are available, they actually have these little road stands uh, in, in up, uptown, midtown New Orleans. 
uh, like like they some, sometimes are selling tomatoes and peaches. Well, there's a truck that actually is a couple of guys. They sell, that's all they do is sell collard greens. Buy the bunch like this. So you say, yeah, I'll take two heads of collard greens and I'll take a head of mustard greens. But as you guys know, if you do them fresh like this, there's a lot. They grow in the dirt. So, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't come in a box. <laughs> so you got to no clean shit. them. You got to wash them. You got to, at least two or three times, you got to put them in cold water, drain the water, rinse them, make sure the sand is out of there. And then what you do is you cut them. And then you go, oh my God, I'm on the ship. This is about how many it would be for three. But, you know, as you guys know. So you must start with, with like, barrels of this stuff. <laughs> but basically what we're going to do, guys, it's very, very simple. In a traditional southern uh, way of these, of these collard greens, you're basically going to have either some sort of pork product in it. We're not going to use a pork product today because we'll lighten it up, but some people use ham hock, some people use bacon, some people use pigtail, some people use the jowl. It all really depends. Uh, me, I, I like the ham hock thing. I'm like the ham hock. Yeah, yeah, I like that smoky. Is that what you use yeah, as well? Yeah, we actually have ham hocks on the show. I like, yeah. the, uh, I like the smokiness of them. And if you're not a pork fan out there, folks, you can easily just use um, smoked turkey. Uh, the legs or the wings smoked, uh, they work really great. You can get the flavor. So the whole thing about this now is I have our butter beans in here, and they're just cooking real quick with, turn this up a bit, we're just getting the juices out of them. And now, for our collard greens, we're just going to add some oil. Oh, yeah. Kind of coat the bottom there, folks. A little salt for the bottom, get it happy. And then we're going to take our onions now and start adding our onions in there. Chef, I got a question. Yes, sir. I've been told multiple things about uh, caramelizing or sauteing onions. I've been told to throw in a little bit of sugar that will bring out the natural sugars or enhance the caramelization. Is that true or? Yeah, there, there's, some, there's some truth to that. It's, it's kind of a, a fast way of doing it. Uh -huh. Uh, what happens is that eventually as you begin over like say medium heat your onions gonna go from golden brown to a light brown to like a peanut butter brown and then it's gonna start caramelizing when that point happens basically that's when the sugars are gonna start coming out in your onions so what you're basically doing is you're getting it to maybe a golden brown stage because of for, for timing factors. And I could see that on a boat very easily. So add a little sugar and you're gonna help the caramelization because the sugar is gonna caramelize very, very simple, right? Now, a little salt and a little fresh ground pepper. Now, wash, dry, wash, dry, wash, two, three times easily. Then what we're gonna do, first of all, we're gonna add a little bit of chicken broth to our succotash and let that now start evaporating. It's going to come, it's going to simmer, we're going to start evaporating. Now I'm going to give it a little spice. So I have some of this chili pepper. And this stuff will light you up. <laughs> so we're just going to add just a little bit of that so we have like the nice pepper flavor in that. Now, the onions start almost caramelizing. We're going to add our garlic in there. And then what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to start step by step inch by inch. We're gonna start slowly adding our greens, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our onions are coming along just fine. Get about another three or four minutes on the onions. We're gonna start adding handfuls of greens, a little bit of chicken broth. Handfuls of greens, a little bit of chicken broth. It's gonna start wilting down. Big is gonna go to small. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how this is looking Check on our catfish, and then where do you see this delicious cornbread? We'll be right back on Emerald's Table. So I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked that you guys uh, cook collard greens and catfish. That's amazing. And cornbread by the sheep hands. Okay, welcome back, folks. We're starting our collard greens here. Now, um, I can't possibly imagine doing this for 3,000 people. Now look at how many greens I have here, and we're just talking about, you know, six of us, right? Uh, so a little layer of salt, and uh, you know what, guys? I think we should spice it up a little bit. We'll use a little bit of crushed pepper in here. Ooh, 
<laughs> and then what we'll do is once we get a layer there, guys, we're going to add a little bit of chicken broth. Now, if I was home, I'd add a beer. You know, that's always a good thing, you know. But And then what we want to do is we're going to turn the heat on. Let it start evaporating a little bit so the greens start concentrating. Then we're going to keep adding greens. A little more stock, keep adding greens. You guys are with me? I a question. Yeah. We use chicken, uh, not broth, but we change Bouillon? the base. Yes. Yeah, you only have so much room. So you're using Which the concentrated. Which one would you think would be better for that? Well, you know what? What I would do is I would take that base and I would dissolve it in the water first. And then I would have that as like a stock. So I'd have a big bombery of that with a ladle. And it, that's already dissolved in the water. Taste it. Make sure it's not too salty. Then I'd add it like that. Now the succotash has been simmering down. We're going to add now our corn right off the kernel. Frozen corn, no big deal. You know, people have a, a the hang up about frozen vegetables, right? You know, not the Navy. Oh, no, you know what? I mean, you know, basically when they're freezing them, it's because that's when they have a lot of the crop. So what they do, how much corn can you eat? It's like when you have, have a garden. If you ever have a garden, you get zucchini. How much can you, how much zucchini can you have, right? And how many neighbors and friends do you have? See, I have like one, so I got plenty of zucchini. All right, now we're going to take all our dry ingredients. The uh, cornmeal, flour, baking powder, salt, sugar. No, no sugar. Which one's sugar? That one. That one's out. We're going savory. Little salt. To here, about one and a half cups of low-fat milk. Usually I use buttermilk. An egg, some butter. I told you it was going to be garlicky, so we're going to add that right in here. This gets now also set on the oven, 450. Our pan has got to be hot. Well, let me show you this. We're going to add the dry, the wet to the dry. Then what we're going to do is add, here's a little secret, just a little bit of vegetable oil. And then I'm going to take some vegetable oil on our cast iron skillet. God, I, don't, I can't imagine how you would do this. You do it in an oven. I could, I could do it on a griddle. I could use a griddle. Oh, you could use yeah, a griddle? I, I, got a, I got a flat top. Well, OK, we'll use it on a griddle. Listen, we got cornbread, <laughs> collard greens, catfish, Succotash, when we come back, where do you see this southern meal? You're not going to believe it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A griddle, like a big griddle? Like a tilt skillet. Main, main galley, no, we have a tilt skillet, but then the main galley has a griddle. Stone, yeah. Like a plancha. Like that's Spanish. She, <laughs> yeah. she knows what that is, right? Yes. Plancha. Yeah, we got four of them. OK, welcome back. We're going to finish this fantastic southern meal. Now. Here's what we're going to do, guys. Little butter. I know we're keeping it light, but we're feeding a lot of people here. Come on. The people want to know. And then we'll just add some beautiful, fresh chopped parsley to this right at the end. Get that beautiful, fresh taste. All right, so now that's done. And that's going to go right inside of our beautiful little bowl here. Fantastic. Now, after 20 minutes, 22 minutes, don't be sticking a fork in there. The cornbread comes out. We hope. <laughs> we always hope for the cornbread to come out. Now, and a little stick. I like that better. You know why? Because that's where the butter goes. <laughs> See that? It was all planned. They call that a butter hatch. <laughs> now, the collard greens. Oh, baby. Now, if you want to kick them up a little bit, don't be bashful. Add a little bit of vinegar. Sometimes in the South, they add just a touch of vinegar. I'm using a little apple cider vinegar. It just kind of gives them a little, a little pop. So now, the collard greens. We're going to take these babies right out, of the, right out of the pot. Put them right on your family platter. We're having a southern party here. Oh, look at this, guys, huh? Oh, can you smell that? So much love coming out of here. Oh, now we have that. Looks beautiful. Now what we're going to do is get our catfish Right out of the oven, nice and crispy. 
This is looking good. Looking good. Hey, folks, remember, as I always tell you, right? Oh, look at this, guys. It's really simple. Food is meant to be shared, especially with friends like you. I'll see you next time. I want to thank our guests. Thank you for what you're doing for us in this country. I appreciate that. We'll see you next time on Emerald's Table. Okay, see, then we're going to put a few lemons here like this. And then we'll get really healthy. We do some olive oil like this. And then we'll do this. We take a little bit of the parsley, and there we have it, guys.